Welcome to the Greater Montana Foundation Legacy Project, preserving the history of Montana broadcasting and the pioneers of communication whose vision and foresight brought together the people of Montana. Hello, I'm Vic Miller, and joining me is former United States Senator Conrad Burns, who founded the Northern Agriculture Network and is a member of the Montana Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Conrad, good to have you with us. And, Thank you. Uh, let's start with... Uh, where were you born and raised? Well, I, was, I come out of northwest Missouri and uh, hitchhiked up here when I was in 1953, when I was 18, you know, and kind of fell in love with the state and forgot to go home. <laughs> you, you spent some time in the military. Yes. Three years in the Marine Corps. Okay. Yeah. You had an opportunity to see you quite a bit of the world then, huh? Yeah, well, you got to see it, yeah, a little more than I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I was in the Far East, stationed on Okinawa, and went into Korea once, coldest place I've ever been in my whole life, and and then back to Japan, and then come home. Hmm. Was well, this during the, uh, what they Korean. called Korean misunderstanding? <laughs> they, yeah. They didn't want to call it a war. Well, no, they, they, they called it a police action. Right. But I got older, there wasn't one policeman. <laughs> Didn't see one. When you came back to uh, Montana, what happened to you then? Well, I went to work for the American Pole Herford Association. And, I, and they gave me the assignment of, of Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. Then they threw California in there. Oh my gosh. And I, that's, per, that's a pretty big pasture. You know, and uh, so I, I traveled that for a while, and I had a cousin living here in Billings, and I stayed with him and traveled out of here. So, and then one thing led to another. Went to work for Billings last night. I was the first general manager of the Northern International Stock Show and Rodeo, and then I went to work for Billings Livestock Commission Company. Okay. Now, Niall is really grown from oh gosh yes from his infancy you know we also started mate montana agri trade mm -hmm. association uh agri trade exposition and uh and it's grown too it, it's huge now and uh but started broadcasting for billings livestock and back in those days you know when when charlie pike was doing the radio for oh, pays yes. and i was doing it for billings livestock commission company my gosh, that brings back some memories. It sure does. Charlie used to be on uh, Cook Radio when I was working there back when the coast yeah. of the earth was cooling. Charlie had a very distinctive voice. He really did. Yeah, he had a great sense of humor, but it was a little dry and nobody ever understood it. <laughs> How did the uh, Northern Ag Network come to be? Well, I uh, I went down and I was... I was uh, manager of the Riverton Livestock in Riverton, Wyoming. And uh, so me and the boss down there didn't get along too well. He was kind of fiddling around with the escrow account. And you can't do that in a livestock business. So uh, I quit down there and come back to Billings. And I was looking for something to do. So, and I went to work for uh, Color Egg Television here. And the guy wanted to know if, he, if we could take a total hour and schedule a lot of things in there, and we did, and, we, and it sold really good. And then uh, then it got fired there. <laughs> we, got a, we got a new manager, and he didn't like uh, cowboys or people that chewed tobacco and worked in the stockyards. And uh, he just, he had, he had come out of Los Angeles, and he thought he'd been sent to the tundra of which there was no return. Uh -huh. So one day I went to work and I'd been loading cattle on the rail of Billings Live. I get up there to do the noonday broadcast and he was standing there in the entryway. And he's, and he, you know, you don't, if you work in the stockyards, you don't have to get down and roll in it to smell like it. Right. You know, so I walked by him, he said, my gosh, you're not going in there and smelling like that. And I just said, well, I didn't know that we'd, 
gone and another step. I know they can hear and see us, but I didn't know they could smell us. <laughs> and uh, so I just walked down to my Levi's and done the whole show with just a shirt and tie on. And uh, of course, he fired me rapid. <laughs> and but I tell you, there was a fellow that owned the television station at that time was a man by the name of Bert Harris. And he was a great, great man. And he told me, called me that night, and he said, well, Conrad, don't go any place now. I said, you're doing well, just stay right where you are, and I'll see if I can't get this fixed. And so I said, well, I don't think that'll do any good. So I said, I'm thinking about doing something in radio and the network business. Well, he said, if you want to do that, if you need some help, we'll holler. And uh, so that's, that's where I got to start. Hmm. If you can't work for somebody else, you got to work for yourself. Just see how bad you are. Right. <laughs> so you just basically started from uh, from scratch. Huh? Yep. We, uh, back in those days, there was, a, there was an organization called Western Microwave. Oh, yes. Remember? Right. And they published a rate but I never could get them nailed down to even meet with them because it was owned by the same fellow that owned Intermountain Network out of Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'd be a competitor to them. They weren't interested in talking to me. And so I just went a full period telephone line. And uh, pretty expensive, but it worked. Mm -hmm. So you just went out and hustled some radio stations to carry you? Yeah. First one was KOJM, Haver, Montana. Oh. And uh, then we had uh, Bozeman, Haver. Uh, we had one little FM station in Missoula uh, to start off with. Mm -hmm. And Lewistown. And Forsyth, they had a new, brand new radio station going on there down there, KVCK. Okay. And uh, and those were the kind of. Then I had to have one in Wyoming to cheapen up that telephone deal because you know, remember that when telephones were cut into areas, lattice. Sure. And lattice, so you you, you get a station in Wyoming, why? Uh, we we'll, we've got that rate for you. So I went down and got Cody and Thermopolis. Oh my gosh. So, and that's it. And then it just kept growing and growing and growing. Yeah, we started off with five, and when I when I left, we had twenty nine. Mm. So it, it grew. Vic, it was a. I'll tell you, it was a. Uh, it occurred to me whenever we were competitive, kind of with chart between Pays and Billings Live, that was the only place that people electronically could get the markets. Mm -hmm. Of course, with 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 us being the competition with each other, well, you know, it, it, we 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 only give our good points and they give their good points, and that's not and that wasn't really what marketing news was about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it occurred to me that that if we if, if we can just start a network, maybe. <laughs> We can get in the information business. Okay. And uh, and really, that was a rough time. I don't know, uh, Big, you can remember the time, those were the days when, that was in 75. Those were the days when every radio consultant says, don't talk, all music. Right. Push in music. We don't need this talking business. Right. So you was going to get, you know, the advice of their consultants. But it actually turned out. It turned out where, and then agriculture didn't really have a voice. Here it is. It's the largest contributor to the GDP of the state, and uh, and here it didn't have it didn't have a voice. Hmm. And uh, so we fulfilled that vacuum, and uh, and then we. Uh, we just kept cooking along, and it and it grew. We uh, we did we did some polling or or some some uh, research work on the state, and found out you know that we were pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
but it, the 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 model, the business model, was was I'd pay the line haul, but I also get so much time in a program, and then they get the rest. Oh, okay. The radio station, and that's the way I pay my way. Okay. Channel 8 may have tossed you out, but I recall when I was general manager of KTVQ that we uh, had a meeting and you showed up on the air here. No, yeah, that, that wasn't right. <laughs> I come begging for <laughs> for an outlet on TV, and I just drove uh, that day, that time, you had a Mr. Bradley. Mm -hmm. Good Lord, that Conrad will say anything. <laughs> yeah, Don Bradley. <laughs> And he he's a really good man. Mm -hmm. He was. Yeah. I recall being at some event down at Pays, and the guy standing behind me said, I just went to work for the Northern Ag Network and Conrad Burns. And the guy standing behind me was Taylor Brown. So Taylor basically uh, got to start with you then. Yep. Well, we sold it to Taylor. And... Uh, and he's done a wonderful job. Of course, he he was president of the student body, graduate of MSU, and uh, I mean, and he's quite a lot of cowboy to him, mm -hmm. and a very distinctive voice. And so he's done really well, and I'm glad. Your uh, first foray into political office was as a Yellowstone County Commissioner. That's right. What prompted you to get involved in that? I don't have any idea. <laughs> but, you know, part of the best job I've ever had, I guess what prompted me to run for county commissioner, you got free tickets to the fair. <laughs> that's a pretty good incentive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's when they, they went to an all-pay gate. But uh, I'll tell you, though, Vic, uh, I went to a fair board meeting. And you know, I was a pretty supporter of 4 H and FFA, you know, the young people. Sure. And they were they were crowding they were crowding the young people all the fairgrounds. They wanted more space for a carnival. So I went down and registered a complaint. And the, and then the the county commissioner was down there, uh, he said, Well, you don't know what you're talking about or you do, you know you never run run a fair. I said, No, I've never run a fair. He said, well, some things got to go and some things got to change. And so I sat down. But uh, I remember that going home, I said, I think he's right. Some things got to go and some things got to change. So I went down and filed against him and beat him. <laughs> Gordon was his name. That was, they, that was not the change you had in mind. <laughs> well, no, I went down there. <laughs> but uh, it was a great job for Yellowstone County. It also really is good training as to how government works, what works, what doesn't work. That's right. It held you in good stead later. Oh, yeah. You know, you never forget what you learned at the county level. You know, you, and you took, I took that to, to the Senate. And, uh, but that, when I ran for the Senate, I said, I went home and told Phyllis, she said, you've lost, I told her, I said, you've lost your mind. You've absolutely lost your mind. And Phyllis, you know, she's been right more she's been wrong. But not this time. Well, she wasn't that time. <laughs> That's right. But it, it, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful ride for me. I'm wholly blessed. I really am. I recall the first time you ran... I saw you at Rotary the Monday before the election. You were the underdog, no question about it, running against John Melcher, the incumbent. You came up to me and said, I'm going to win this thing tomorrow. <laughs> and I said, I know you will, Conrad, but I didn't know you would. <laughs> <laughs> but you did. Well, we just got some numbers in. The committee just got some numbers in. And uh, we caught him on Friday. Mm -hmm. And we figured if we caught him, we can beat him. Yeah, the momentum. Yeah. And then a lot of people said, well, 
we don't think Conrad could win. I had a lot of people going, we didn't think he could win, but we voted for you anyway. <laughs> but uh, what a thing that was. You know, my mother was, my, I was raised in a Democratic family, you know. Mm -hmm. And my folks were out there for, that, for the election. And uh, my mom told me, now if you don't send any of that election stuff down here to us in Missouri, if you do, send it to the people next door. We don't want the mailman to know that you're a Republican. <laughs> Rather, interestingly enough, in the history of Montana, there have only been two Republican United States senators. Right. The other was Zale Zecton, who lasted fast because of some... I recall Zales being quoted once as saying, if I thought to be overly intelligent to represent the people of Montana, I wouldn't have run. And <laughs> that was not the best campaign speech he ever made in his life. But did anyway. You, did, did you ever meet him? No, I never did meet Zales. Very nice man. Yeah. But he could be a lot like me. I mean, he could completely destroy in one sentence. <laughs> Self-destruct. You bet. You spent... A great deal of time in the United States Senate. Broadcasters, quite frankly, don't have an awful lot of friends in Washington, D.C., but you definitely were one of them. Oh, yeah. I, I found out, you know, they're so important to our society. Vic, you know, this is, this is not only information, but it, it gathers the community. And, uh, yeah, whether it's radio or television. And uh, I don't know what they did to John McCain. John McCain has had a terrible time getting along with you folks. Mm -hmm. But he thought he, he, he was making a living on free spectrum. And, of course, then he wanted to take all the spectrum away from him and then reallocate it. And I said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And we, got, we crossed sabers on that. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness I, I won that fight. There are those who say, okay, the airways belong to the people, but the airways are just airways until someone puts up the money and the That's expertise right. to get something going on it. But Vic, when you look at the basis of it, I look at it like that. It democratizes America at, at a free market at, at, the, at the roots. It democratizes because you have no you have no idea who's listening or what they're listening to, but it democratizes anybody can market. And uh, and and that's very important to me because I'm a free market man. Mm -hmm. And and broadcast has that ability. What were some of the best things or the worst things of your tenure in the Senate? Well, I suppose the last election wasn't very good. No. But uh but as it turned out, it turned out like I thought it would, and even even with all the stuff, all the swirl going on. But I think the high point was the the the, the 56 telecom bill, which created internet, created broadband, high definition, because of a new technology to come in. Vic, you know, there used to be on your TV signal. There was, there was that 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 signal had a characteristic that you could say, you could you can tell it is it, video. Mm -hmm. Then if it was just data, you could tell it was data, and uh, you could tell that. But when digital digital technology come through, well, you couldn't do that anymore. It's all ones and zeros. And there again, the other day here in Billings. They had a sale down here. They sell almost 9,000 head of cattle on the Internet mm -hmm. at an auction on video, you know, mm -hmm. and 9,000 sheep. And I said, well, and the guy in Agra said, well, you're supposed to be representing agriculture, not, not that technology stuff. And I said, if we don't have it in Montana, we'll get left out. Oh, yeah. And might now look what they're doing with it. There again, you democratize everything in a free market, and it allows the people to have a vision, 
and, and the expertise to use those two terrific things. 20 years ago, if someone had told you that this was going to take place, they would have accused you of having too many beers. Oh, yeah, or t smoking the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, I sat down there and I said, now the old fellow that taught me the auction market business, Ralph Cunningham, he wouldn't believe that. No. And some of us old timers, one guy walked by me and said, Conrad, there's no old timers left. I said, yeah, they are. We are them. Mm -hmm. And we're a half a step behind already. <laughs> At the recent Montana Broadcasters Award Banquet, you were uh, a guest, and another gentleman that was a guest was a longtime friend of yours. You bet. It must have been great seeing him again. It was. He was a good senator. Smith from Oregon, who runs the broadcasters. He's a, he's a very good man and uh, dedicated to this country like you can't believe and believes in this free market. And I think he kind of explained what broadcasting was all about that night. Mm -hmm. I thought he had a great message. We had talked before we went on the air, and we have about six minutes left. But things have changed so much in Washington, D.C. over the years, and the respect that people have for people in Washington, D.C has just fallen off the table. Well, I tell you what, they got, Vic is this old, ben they started taking personal on, on their politics. And so, it it become a personal thing and they lost the trust in one another. And you can't operate in a legislative body unless you have a lot of trust. If Mike Mansfield had one quality, he had the ability to be the buffer between highly emotional and, and very emotional issues. If you read a lot about Mike in the Senate, and I, and I did, I, I studied Mike a lot. In fact, I had breakfast with him almost every Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And, uh, you know, but, but he, had, he, had, he, he was the buffer between the two sides. And he, and he done a great job at that. So you learn from the people who were very successful. And, but right now, the leadership is not, is not thinking about doing that. It's just like I told you a while ago, their image is two drunks arguing over the bar tab on the Titanic. <laughs> and that's not, a, that's not a good image. The, probably two of the people that really have a grasp of the gravity of this situation are Alan Simpson and Mr. Bowles. Oh, yes. Alan and Simpson. You talk to Alan quite frequently, right? Oh, yeah, I do. And he hates this situation that's coming up. But Alan was a, you know, he didn't make speeches to, to some groups that he was very popular with, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I never will forget, I went to, to a speech one time, he was speaking to a bunch of old, uh, seniors, older people. My gosh, I'll tell you what, they jumped up and, Mr. Simpson, do you know who we are? Well, you look like senior citizens. She said, we are the AARP. Oh, yes, now I know who you are. Just a bunch of old geezers held together with a 10% discount at Motel 6. <laughs> And I thought, my God, we're going to get killed before we can't get out of here. <laughs> but, but Simpson, had, he had a grasp, though, with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he might have said some funny things like I did. And people would jump all over him, you know, but they still loved him. Now, Alan never left too much in the holster. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. When he got done, he'd, he'd, he'd fired every bullet. Mm. Very briefly, uh, about two minutes left. In 2009, you had the misfortune of having a stroke. Yep. And there was a point where it wasn't even a given that you'd survived, and you've come back a long way. Well, I've had a good caretaker. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then there's, 
And I will say, there's one thing that no fellow told me one time, he said, you know, death is a, is a terrible thing. I said, you know what? There's only thing, one thing worse, and that's a stroke. Mm -hmm. Because you're left to manage the leftovers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you got to kind of build your speech back again. You got to, you don't think they're as fast as you used to. And like I got this shirt on today, I put on my, my T-shirt backwards six times in a row. Mm -hmm. and, and you do the dumbest things. Yeah. Just dumb. I was at a gathering at one point a number of years ago, and my wife and I were there, and I mentioned that you and Phyllis were friends of ours long before you were a United States Senator. Oh, yes. And we're going to be friends of ours long after you were a United States Senator, and I'm glad to say that is held true. Well, thank you. It was, or you're, you're a great delight. I wish I could write like you do. Well, thank you. Wish I could think like you do. But I can't. But you know. But you learn. You learn your limits, and you got to live within the limits. Right. That's what you got to do, and accept it. Conrad, always a pleasure to see you, and I uh, wish you nothing but the best in the future. Well, thank you very much. And my guest today has been uh, former United States Senator Conrad Burns, the founder of the Northern Ag Network, and a member of the uh, Montana Broadcasting Hall of Fame. I'm Vic Miller. Thanks for watching. This programming series is brought to you by the Greater Montana Foundation, benefiting the people of Montana through communication of issues, trends, and values of importance for present and future generations of Montanans. And by the Montana Historical Society, Big Sky, Big Land, Big History. And with the help of Cordillera Communications, with stations in Billings, Bozeman, Butte, Great Falls, Missoula, Kalispell, and Helena, Cordillera Communications, the Montana Television Network.